coming up on this edition of Abel De La Nair, also on Orca Media and WYKR Radio, 101.3 FM. We have Zachariah, Zachariah Ralph Watson from Central Vermont Habitat of Humanity to talk about the housing crisis in Central Vermont. All that and much more when Abel De La Nair, television and radio starts right now. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel de Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Abel De La Nair, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of all with abilities despite disabilities. Uh, we would like to thank Zachariah uh, Ralph Watson from Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity for partnering, uh, partnering with Abel De On Air for this television and radio program. Uh, thank you for joining us on this edition of Abel De On Air. Thank you for having me, Larry. Okay. What are the missions and goals of, um, before we get started and talk about the housing crisis, what are the missions and goals of Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity? Well, H Habitat for Humanity is a 501c3 affordable housing nonprofit. Um, we, uh, you know, we have a, a vision uh, where there's a world where everyone has a decent place to live. Uh, and um, the principles of our mission are that we, uh, we focus on shelter. Um, we advocate for affordable housing. We promote dignity and hope um, for our partner homeowners in our community. And we support sustainable and transformational development, um, our work. Uh, we are a Christian ecumenical nonprofit, so we our, our work is a demonstration of our love of Jesus Christ. And, um, of course, we also, as a, non -Christ as a Christian organization, we also have a uh, do not proselytize. So <laughs> that could be confused there. But that's, that's our mission and our mission principles. Okay, let's go into the homeless crisis now um obviously there's and forgive me if i'm wrong here so you know redirect me if i make a mistake but uh, lately there's been a housing crisis and there's not enough housing stock can you explain that please 
and why is there so Sure, many- I think there's, um, you know, I think if we look at the bigger picture of the um, housing crisis in Vermont, um, we're looking at um, folks that are housing and secured all the way and, and, and considering it as a pipeline, you know, where you have people at the beginning of the pipeline which are housing insecure, they're either unhoused or, um, how, uh, you know, at risk of losing their housing, not in adequate shelters or their um, rent is too expensive or housing costs are too expensive, all the way up to people that are able to afford to buy an affordable house on the market. Um, there's a couple bottlenecks in the way of helping people get from where they are now um, in, in being housing insecure or homeless. Um, to being able to buy a house on the market. And um, the first thing is, you know, we need to provide stable housing for folks. And um, the best way we can do that for folks that are currently unhoused is is getting them into subsidized rentals. Um, uh, there's a huge need for these. We know there's a big demand for them, but uh, the number of uh, subsidized rentals across the state is very is limited. Um, and uh, And so there's a big waiting list. Uh, to get into those. Um, so you've got a bottleneck right there where big demand for subsidized rentals, stable, affordable housing. Um, but then uh, when you get into the sort of stable, affordable housing, whether it's housing vent- vouchers or subsidized housing, um, you uh, don't really have any place to go from there. And that primarily has to do with that the number of available housing units, which um, somebody it, that is currently... Um, renting with using subsidies or vouchers would be able to afford to buy. Uh, they're just really limited. So, uh, and a lot of those houses are built by Habitat for Humanity um, here in Vermont. And so, there's just not a lot of housing units available out there that are affordable to buy for somebody that's coming out of um, low-income affordable housing rentals. And as a result, you know, you have a lot of the folks that are currently in subsidized housing have nowhere else to go, and so they stay there. And so there's our second bottleneck, and and really the only way that we can um, continue to create spaces for folks that need stable, affordable housing is by building more affordable rentals. Um, So our, you know, the second bottleneck is that uh, there's just not a lot of affordable housing units out there um, that people can buy. Um, Now, now what is, is, if I may... If I may interject for a minute, what is um, uh, stabilized? Uh, okay, so so what is um, a housing voucher for those that don't know, and what is um, stabilized housing? Well, stable, affordable housing is um, you know is it, is something where there's a lease, um, where you're guaranteed a place to live. Um, and um, and then it's affordable, meaning that the cost of renting there is less than 30% of your um, household income. Um, so that's what stable and affordable means. Um, you know, unstable would be that you're uh, you don't have a lease. You're sleeping on your parents' couch or uh, a friend's couch or something like that. Um, and then unaffordable is when you're paying more than 30% of your income on. On, uh, on housing. And so um, there are different types of rental subsidies across the state. And um, one of them, uh, one option is that you can access housing vouchers um, from the Vermont State Housing Authority. Um, and it's just a, it's a voucher. There are a limited number of vouchers across the state and you can apply to access them. And those vouchers can be used to basically subsidize or bring down the cost of your monthly rent. Okay, so um, uh, for, I'm going to talk about this briefly. Uh, recently, WCAX, um, as a matter of fact, I think it was uh, as of today, March 1st, um, according to WCAX and other news um, outlets, um, hotel owners, hotel and motel owners have to either accept uh a deal where um, only a certain amount will be paid. At, it's $80. If, if, if a motel owner is um, charging $130 a night and the state is only paying 80 then they have to accept that deal. 
uh, why uh, is the motel hotel vouchers working for Vermonters? Why or why not? If I said that right. Um, yeah, I think um, you know. I think Vermont is right to um, ha take a stronger stance on negotiating the cost of um, how much they're willing to pay for the to hotels to house homeless folks. Um, there's, uh, you know, but the reality is that this Excuse is. Excuse me this for interrupting. It's only a temporary. It's only a temporary band aid, though. Yeah, you exactly. Agree? This was the ho the ho uh, hotel voucher program was supported through federal funding um, during the COVID relief, um, for, and it was never meant to be a long term solution. Um, and so, you know, and it was being funded by federal dollars before, and so there was kind of this, uh, you know, they we, we would pay whatever the hotels were asking. Now that Vermont is footing the bill, I think um, the state is trying to be realistic in what it can actually afford to pay. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, the how, like I said, the hotel voucher program was never meant to be a long-term solution. The long-term solution um, for addressing the homeless crisis, at least for housing, uh, which is only a part of the problem um, for homelessness, is, uh, is, you know, increasing the stock of subsidized rentals and in, in increasing the stock of affordable home ownership units in the state. That's the long-term solution to how we provide housing for those that are unhoused, um, uh, which does not, of course, address um, many of the issues that lead to homelessness. Um, and so that's only a part of the solution. Um, okay, so this current migrant crisis that America is experiencing now, um, and there's hardly any housing for the homeless, is that going to be a huge problem, do you think? Yes or no? Um, so I'm not, I'm not an expert on this, Larry, but, um, you know, from a uh, from personal perspective, um, uh, the the two are unrelated. I think, I mean, we, we know that Vermont has traditionally depended on migrant workers for farms, for, um, uh, you know, uh, to work in hotels, and, um, you know, we have uh, immigrants that come on work visas from Jamaica, from Mexico, from all over the world uh, to Vermont. And um, so we have depended on migrant workers because we don't have a large enough workforce uh, in Vermont. And those folks that have traditionally depended on those workers are also struggling to find housing for them. Um, so the, um, I don't think migrants or immigrants are making our housing situation worse. I think that uh, they're, they're just, um, they are experiencing the same hardships as everybody else in the state with housing. Mm. Um, so tell me um, a little bit more about what Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity does. How does your program work, and how can people um, who really need this service avail themselves of the service? Uh, yeah, so like you said, we are an affordable housing nonprofit. Um, our, we have two uh, main programs. Uh, one of them is home repairs. So we do um, home critical home repairs for existing homeowners that um, are having issues with um, access primarily. So um, if you're getting elderly or if you ha are having mobility challenges, um, then we, a lot of what we're doing for our home repairs is building ramps and widening doorways. Uh, so um, what we're doing is we're, we're improving the existing housing stock, um, which uh, is especially important in that we have an aging population so we can, the types of repairs that we're doing are assisting with aging in place. Um, the other uh, program, our main program is our home ownership program. So we build uh, houses in partnership with income sensitive Vermonters that are in need of better housing. And, um, you know, our, we, we build about a house a year. We're building our first duplex in Randolph right now. Um, it's a pretty exciting project. Um, and, uh, we're, it's actually using panelized construction. So the sides of the housing are being, houses are being constructed off site and then assembled on site. And, um, uh, beyond that, most of the work for the, types of projects that we do are done with volunteers using sweat equity. 
Um, and so it's sweat equity from the partner homeowners. So partner homeowners are um, partnering with us. It is not a handout, hand up. Um, they're learning how to build and maintain their homes, and also, you know, they're investing their own time in exchange for um, an affordable mortgage from us uh, with, with lots of subsidies. Um, so, um, yeah, our homes are, uh, in addition to Randolph right now, we're also building um, a uh, house at in um, Barry City. Uh, it's at 22 Hill Street. We recently selected our partner homeowner for that. She's a young woman uh, who lives in uh, Williamstown currently, and um, she's a teacher at the high school, so we're pretty excited about that. And our two homeowners for the Randolph build um, is an Im immigrant family from Rwanda um, who are permanent residents here in the United States, and then um, also a single grandmother and her two adopted grandchildren. Um, but our, um, our homes are... Um, high quality, um, they're energy efficient, and they're affordable. We build beautiful homes, um, better than a lot of what you'd see coming up today. And um, uh, and uh, and then we, but they're energy efficient, so they're low cost to operate, and they are subsidized to the point that they are guaranteed to be a, guaranteed to be affordable for our homeowners. Um, and our work is made possible because we receive um, volunteer. Uh, work to help build the homes um, and because we usually receive discounts on the materials that we buy um, and oftentimes we have vendors um, like the Vermont Construction Company um, that is installing a roof for us at no cost um, so they'll either do it for free, donate their time and labor um, or and materials or they'll uh, provide discounts so we can our program is made possible because of volunteers and um, the vendors and the and suppliers that we work with. Um, RK Miles also gives us a nice um, do, um, discount on uh, a lot of the materials they provide for us. Um, so, so I'm going to talk about the houses for a minute. The houses that you choose, um, uh, are you building again from the ground up? Sometimes, or are you taking properties that um I don't um um is dilapidated a wrong word or 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 say bad construction or in need of bad repair? How 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 does it work through your agency, or or both? If I may if I may say that. Yeah, we we tra <clears throat> we're traditionally building new homes, which is from the ground up, um, new construction. Um, however, we, we did do a rehab. Uh, we rehabbed a um, house that um, was uh, was basically gutted. There was nothing in the inside. It was just uh, the, the studs. Are you, are you and, talking about you know, the house in Barry that I went to? Or the, in the Barry. House? Yep, yep, mm -hmm. that one. Yep, so we, um, so we, can, we do rehabs, um, and, but primarily we're new builds. Uh, the city of Barry for the um, parcel, for the house that we're building in Barry, at 22 Hill Street, that um, was a house, and it was uh, that was obtained by the city um, and the, of Barry, and they donated it to the to us. And we, um, the house was unfortunately unsalvageable. We couldn't we couldn't keep it. So, what, that? Uh, we, so what, um, what does that mean in layman's terms? Um, it was structurally not sound. It, it couldn't. Um, we couldn't save it. Uh, so uh, we had to demolish it. So we uh, worked with Bellavance, and they knocked down the house for us. And so now we have a flat, vacant site, and it's going to be really a uh, good site for us to build a new house on starting this spring. Um, so in terms of uh, partners that you have, um, because without partners, uh, you wouldn't be able to do what you do, you know, construction companies, uh, businesses like I don't know if Home Depot is a part of your um, help, but you know people that donate supplies. Um, how does that work? Do they sign up to help out, or do do they donate? Uh, um, how do your partners help out with this stuff? So our, um, volunteers can um, register online through our website. We have a volunteer management platform called Volunteer Up, and interested volunteers register for that, and then they receive notifications when uh, there are opportunities to volunteer, and they can go on and sign up to volunteer there. 
Um, <clears throat> additionally, we have, uh, so if we have um, for, uh, you know, like uh, for vendors that give us discounts and things like that, tri uh, usually we, when we send out a uh, request for proposal, um, which is, you know, we say, okay, we need to do this work and we send it out to a bunch of vendors, we will oftentimes include language um, that says, you know, um, please include any discounts or uh, donation uh, in, your, in your bid, in your proposal. And so we'll be able to see if um, people uh, are, are willing to make a donation or a discount um, through, through um, their proposals. Um, and then a lot of times we <clears throat> uh, have relationships with existing contractors and we work really hard to build those relationships so that um, when we can work with them over and over again and we know that we're getting quality work, but also um, afford, uh, you know, we're also getting discounts or free um, donations with those things. Mm -hmm. And it could be it could be anything from nails to uh, wood to uh, food um, food for people that are helping, uh, so on and so forth. And that's 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 right. Um, everything that it takes to um, to to build a home, um, you know, all every every you know, we have to buy it otherwise, and so. Every dollar saved is is uh, is really important, um, and uh, you know because because we are a nonprofit, a lot of our funding is coming from um, private philanthropy from individual donors, and uh, we want to make do the best we can with the money that's given to us, and so we we try to be as responsible, or we are responsible with those funding, um, and uh, and to to make that those dollars last. And stretch them as, as tell far me as a little can, bit about is, the I know I'm kind of jumping around but tell me a little bit about um, the for those that don't know some of the history of uh, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity yeah we were uh, Habitat for Humanity in Central Vermont was founded in 1989 and um, by a group of volunteers we were um, we built about 31 uh, over 30 houses is 31. Um, we and uh, we've been primarily volunteer led until about 2016, which is when we hired our first part-time executive director, Debbie Goodwin, um, and um, and then I was hired in 2020. Um, and we also recently hired our first full-time site supervisor, Rick Battistoni. Um, and um, and we're actually in a growing phase right now as part of our response to the housing crisis. We're um, trying to do more than one build at a time. So we're hiring more site supervisors. Um, we're hiring more staff, um, and, um, and which means, which will enable us to potentially um, be building five houses at the same time next year. So that's a big jump from one house a year to five, um, and that's because um, because we're we're trying our best to adjust um, to the housing crisis, uh, uh, respond to it while also keeping our overhead expenses low. Um, but Habitat for Humanity in Central Vermont is an affiliate of Habitat for Humanity International, um, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, housing nonprofits in the world. Um, we're in all 50 states and I think uh, over 200 countries. Um, and, uh, uh, well, and so Habitat International is, uh, provides logistical support to us, um, templates, and uh, they also advocate at the federal level for, um, for home ownership, uh, affordable home ownership. Um, but otherwise, we're, we sort of, we operate independently and we have our own independent board of directors and separate finances and things like that. Do you think and, and the, don't uh, I mean, this goes to a global level. Do you think the need, do you think there's enough, uh, there will ever be enough housing to go around, or is the need too great? Um, if you want to chime in on that question, am I saying it wrong? Um, I think it's a tough, tough question to answer. Um, I think that, um, yeah, I, 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 I think that Vermont needs, I've heard somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars, um, or forty to fifty thousand housing units to meet the existing housing stock, and we're not build, building not nearly enough 
of that. I think that we're, um, but I you think you could also hear people argue that we have um, a ton of the existing housing stock that it's either underutilized where it's like a five bedroom, three or four or five bedroom households with one person living in it, or um, it needs repairs. Um, we have some really old housing stock um, that's not modern or up to date. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, there's kind of, um, I don't think we're going to build our way out of a housing crisis, but, um, if population growth continues at its current rate, uh, we will continue to need more housing. And I think at some point that becomes unsustainable. So, I mean, that's my personal belief. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any uh, data to support it. So I'm not sure it's a good question, Larry. Okay. Um, Vermont had a flood back in July. Uh, what are you guys doing to help with that? Um, for, for obviously, um, uh, when you build your houses, you have to, um, I don't know what's the word, fl be floodproof or something. Uh, if I'm saying it wrong, uh, please tell me if I'm, what the, what's the right thing to say, but um, uh, what are some of the things you're dealing with that, um, dealing with the flood? Well, uh, so all of our, we, we do not build houses in flood plains or river corridors or things like that. So none of our homeowners were impacted by the July flooding. Um, uh, we, Habitat for Humanity International and, and um, has a strong emergency response program to natural disasters. And so we received strong support from Habitat for Humanity international after the July flooding, um, both in terms of sort of informational about what to expect. And um, so initially we, we, uh, we lent our volunteers out to whoever needed them to do a, um, immediate emergency response. Um, and since then we've been able to work in coordination with um, local long-term recovery groups um, like uh, crew in, in Waterbury in Barry up in Barry and the Hope Coalition, which is sort of a regional. And uh, we work directly with them to receive referrals um, for folks that are in need of home repairs. And um, <clears throat> we, we kind of have two different ways of approaching folks that were impacted by the flood. Um, we provide emergency repairs, um, and, which is, you know, just getting, making it so somebody can live there while they are dealing with something else. Um, and then we also do permanent um, repairs, which is somebody is planning to live there. They need this type of thing done. So we're, you know, building decks and we're, um, you know, things like that, um, or stairs, replacing stairs. But the, um, um, I think the, the challenge has been that there's not been, uh, that we are still waiting for, um, the case managers, uh, to be set up. Basically, FEMA funds, there's only, we one major pool of FEMA funds to help with the administration or response of flooding, and that uh, that's for case managers. Um, and um, and the case managers handle, um, you know, somebody has an issue, they call them, and uh, then they refer that, then they get them the type of so that's food or water or um, reconstruction. Um, but unfortunately, we don't really have. As far as I know, there haven't really been any set up case managers yet. We're still waiting for those positions to be hired. Um, and so we have a lot of volunteers around uh, in Washington County, which are doing their best to respond to these things. But um, they also uh, are having, you know, dealing with FEMA, dealing with insurance, dealing with the state, dealing with the federal government. It's complicated. And um, there hasn't necessarily been great information out there. And so they're doing their best. And we're trying to support them by doing reconstruction stuff. Okay. I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able and On Air. For more information on Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, uh, you can um, go on their website at www.centralvermonthabitat.org. That uh, website, once again, is www.centralvermonthabitat.org. Did you want to give the number, or, the, or is the website okay? 
Um, website's fine. Folks can also call us at 802-522-8611. That's our office number. It's 802-522-8611. Okay. The number again is 802-522-8611. That's 802-522-8611 or www.centralvermonthabitat.org. I would like to thank... um, Zachariah Ralph Watson, uh, the Executive Director of Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, for joining me on this television and radio uh, topic for Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx, Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.